Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is part two, and here we have Professor Sam Pearson again. Please, no need for applause. All right, so um, if you watched the last video, we solved this problem here by uh, using the Laplace transform method. Great method to use. Uh, I was talking about how great it was in my class, but the partial fractions started to get a little uh, difficult and we had to complete the square on one of the fractions, so the class wasn't really too happy about it. So then they said, well, let's try very uh, undetermined coefficients. And I was saying, oh, that's gonna be much harder because I was trying to push the Laplace transform method because that's what we're doing in class. Well, anyway, let's take a look at what happens when you use undetermined coefficients on this. All right, so here's the problem again. Notice it's non-homogeneous. If you're, if you're working with differential operators, you know that uh, the differential operator D is going to annihilate uh, the, the constant one, and then the differential operator D plus one is going to annihilate E to the minus T. Although in this particular case, I think you can see what the form of the uh, particular function is going to be uh, for your final answer. Now, remember how you do this. Pretend like it's homogeneous, uh, solve the characteristic equation and then build what we call your complementary function uh, from the characteristic equation. So you know you should get this nice quadratic, uh, does not factor, use the quadratic formula, you get these complex conjugate roots, uh, r is equal to negative 2 plus or minus i square root of 2. So now that means that your complementary function is going to have this form e to the minus 2t times parentheses c1 cosine root 2t plus c2 sine root 2t, okay? All right, now, if you want to annihilate the right-hand side of our differential equation, you can operate on both sides by the differential operator d times d plus 1. If you write the original differential equation's left-hand side in operator notation, it's going to look like this but now the right-hand side is zero. Now, you know, when you do it this way, you can see the form of your final answer. So notice the characteristic equation for this is gonna be r times r plus one, and then times that r squared plus four r plus six is equal to zero. We already know about this part, but you see here, you're going to get some constant and then plus some other constant, e to the minus t. That's going to be the particular function for your final answer. Now remember, the final answer here is the complementary function plus the particular function, which we'll call y sub p. So we need to figure out what the constants a and b are. So the original differential equation goes up to a second derivative. So take your y sub p, take two derivatives of it. So the derivative of a plus b e to the minus t is a minus b e to the minus t Take another derivative of that, so you're going to get a b e to the minus t. The left-hand side of the differential equation, if you put in your y sub p into the left-hand side, you're going to get this. Set that equal to the right-hand side, which is 1 plus e to the minus t. Now, I'll leave the algebra to you, but you should verify that when you equate the coefficients here, your a is going to turn out to be 1 sixth and your b is gonna turn out to be one third. So you know your final answer for y is gonna be the y sub c plus the y sub p. We know this is the y sub c, and now we know the y sub p. Now you see the issue here with undetermined coefficients with the initial conditions is now you gotta figure out what your constants c1 and c2 are. Now, it's not gonna to be too bad if you put zero in for y and zero in for t, I think you're gonna be able to see that the c1 is gonna turn out to be negative one-half. That's not gonna to be too bad. Now, the one advantage in the Laplace transform method is that you don't have to worry now about taking a derivative of your function and then putting in the initial condition and then seeing, out what, the, and then seeing what the other constant's going to be. See, notice when you take a derivative of this, here you've got a product rule. And I know you're all smart, so I know you know what the product rule is. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be issues sometimes, if you're not careful here, 
with your first function being e to the minus 2t and your second function being this. So you have to be careful when you're doing the product rule here. Mm -hmm. Taking a derivative of this part, that's not going to be a problem. But anyway, when you do take the derivative of this correctly, then put in your numbers for t and for a y prime you'll end up with a C2 equaling a negative the square root of 2 over 3. Now, you know, I kept the e to the minus 2t factored out of this, even if I multiplied it back in there. When you're taking a derivative, you still have to use product rules there, so I kept it factored out, and uh, this will work out for you. But anyway, see, now you have your final answer with the C1 and the C2 in here. So the final answer here is y of t is equal to e to the minus 2t times parentheses negative 1 half cosine square root of 2t minus root 2 over 3 sine root 2t end parentheses plus 1 sixth plus 1 third e to the minus t. Now if you take a look at this and then we go back over here and take a look what happened with the Laplace transform method. I'll leave it up to you to answer the question which one you think is simpler. If you like algebra, <laughs> Laplace transform method, you know, works for you. If you like completing the square, you like doing partial fractions. Um, notice the constants are already taken care of themselves here in the Laplace transform method. But the reason why I decided to show you the undetermined coefficients method here is because in this particular example, because of what the function was on the right-hand side, and because of the way the initial conditions were, Doing it by undetermined coefficients might not be so bad because notice you only had to take one derivative of this to figure out, uh, you know, one of the constants. So I was trying to make the argument in my class that, hey, Laplace transform method, great all the time, uh, works perfectly all the time. Uh, now, you know, remember, it doesn't work all the time. Uh, you need uh, polynomials, uh, exponentials, sines and cosines, uh, multiplications and linear combinations thereof. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the undetermined coefficients method, so keep that in mind. You know, there's another method, as you probably know, to solve these, and that's called the method of uh, variation of parameters. That's a good method because what happens if your function on the right-hand side is like secant t? or the square root of 1 plus x squared, or um, tangent t, ln t, you know, something like that. See, now you've got to try and use uh, variation of parameters on that because we don't know what's going to happen with uh, Laplace transform on those. We don't know what's going to happen here on variation of or on uh, undetermined coefficients. So you would use uh, variation of parameters on functions like that. However, on this particular problem, you could do variation of parameters on it, but I would argue against it, and I'll tell you why. Take a look at what your two linearly independent solutions are going to be here. Like y1 is going to be e to the minus 2t, cosine square root 2t. y2 is going to be e to the minus 2t, sine root 2t. Think about what you have to do with those. You have to take their derivatives. So you got to use product rules. Uh -huh. Put them in a Ron skin. <laughs> do the Ron skin. Uh -huh. And then you have to, well, you can look up the variation of parameters method if you don't uh, know what it is. You're going to have to do some tough integrals with whether combinations of exponentials and sines or cosines. You can do them. They're integration by parts problems. But they're difficult integration by parts problems, those, those kind of problems where you have to solve for the integral. So if you saw this kind of differential equation, I would use either the Laplace transform method or the undetermined coefficient method to solve it. So that's it. Ooh. Thank you for your time. Woo! Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah.